morning everyone it's Saturday morning and I'm in the kitchen and I'm getting ready to prep our Saturday lunch today I'm thinking of stewed chicken with red beans uh, or potato and I have here um, 3.6 pounds of chicken legs which I've taken out and defrosted I'm trying to film while I'm trying to film this boy is making a lot of noise and mess so I apologize for all the noise in the background I really can't help it so now let's get back to the chicken this is 3.6 pounds of chicken legs uh, did I purchased a large package of chicken legs about eight pounds I cleaned it cut it up rinsed it and seasoned it and divided it so that on days like this it will be easy to cook uh, for this package, I seasoned with three tablespoons of green seasoning, a tablespoon of salt, and a teaspoon of black pepper. Today, I'm also making dal puri. So the first thing we'll do is to measure the dal out, and then I will rinse and put it to boil with some turmeric and garlic. We have lots of garlic and hot peppers from Mummy Garden. I'm also thinking of making curried cabbage. If you've never heard of curry cabbage or if you love curried cabbage you would love today's video and this is what usually happens every weekend my husband comes to visit and he brings all the containers that I gave him the previous week so I have to fill it up for him to take back with him to the city Here I have my roti and general baking section. So everything is always at hand whenever I want to bake a sponge cake or make any type of roti. So I'm going to measure out my ingredients and knead the flour in the mixer, in the stand mixer. I've added the flour, the sugar, the salt, and the baking powder. Now I'll gradually add the water and mix it to form a kneaded to form a, a soft dough on level two. Sometimes it will appear that it needs more moisture, but hold on and continue to knead it and you'll see that it's still moist. So let's put it back on. The dough has come together, which is good. Let's take a look at it and analyze the situation. You see at one point it looked really dry, but now it's very uh, wet, moist. So I'm going to add a little bit of flour and knead it for about two to three minutes. The 
you can see, it's very soft. It's well needed for two to three minutes. I'm going to add um, just a little bit of oil. Make a big luya. That was not a little bit of oil. But my mind is elsewhere at the moment, which is not a good thing. So I'm just going to make a luya and let it sit here until I'm ready. Normally you don't have to knead it, but this is really soft. It's absolutely perfect. Simply amazing. So I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit until until I am ready to fill it. And I'm just doing it like this just to continue to develop that gluten. more oil on top. And that's it. The 20 minute timer is going off. Let's check the uh, dial and see what's happening. It's still very hard. So I'm going to continue to cook it for another 10 minutes. I'm going to start the stewed chicken now. We have a Dutch oven. I think this is about a five quart over high heat just to bring it to temperature. Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And because I'm adding potato, I'm still deciding whether to add the potato here or to cook it separately, but we'll see. Uh, it will evolve as I go along. I'm going to add about four, start with four tablespoons of brown sugar. And now is the moment to decide what I'm going to add to potato. Let me think. Luckily, my husband is now back from BJ's and he bought the potato, so I'll add the potato to the stewed chicken. Since I haven't showed you that recipe, I'll do the stewed chicken with potatoes, the dal curry, and the curry cabbage. Uh, curry aloo is also a great addition. Don't worry about all of this. I should not have been talking about aloo and curry aloo while my sugar was browning. When your sugar is browning, you need to focus, pay attention, and just be mindful of what you're doing. So I need to get back in focus, uh, try to save this sweet chicken. All of this will eventually become one with the stewed chicken again, so don't worry about it if it ever happens to you. I'm gonna leave it in there. Raise the heat to medium high. It was on high before, you never put sugar in the pot when it's high, so that's a lesson we learned today because I don't usually season the chicken and stew it because of, because of this color here, it's a dull color. Usually when you don't season it and you stew it and then add the seasoning, it's a nice bright color. But because it's a dull color, I'm going to add a little bit of ketchup just to develop that uh, nice rich color. It's also time to check on the dal, so let me switch over. Hi Bixby. Hi Bixby, stop the timer please. So it's been boiling for about 30 minutes, it's time to strain it. We'll allow that to drain properly, I'll allow it to cool fully 
and then we will grind it in the food processor. I've had to abandon the stew chicken, but I'm back. Luckily, nothing bad has happened during that time. And give it a stir with my left hand because the camera is on the right. There are challenges you'd never know about because you don't see the camera. But it's always a lot of the hassle juggling the camera and the pots. Makes cooking even more difficult, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice for you. So this is it. I'm going to get the potatoes ready. I'm going to cover this, cook it, get the potatoes ready, and a couple of other uh, ingredients. I haven't decided yet, but it all evolves as we go along. This is real-time cooking. I'll shut up the camera and let's start working on the potatoes. Reduce the heat to low and cover. The sun is hot and they said it's going to rain. Oh, okay. Huh. Right, yeah. Yeah, things are all right, you know. Kumsi <laughs> kumsa. You don't know what kumsi kumsa is? Kumsi kumsa is so so. I don't know what language is that. Is that patwa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weather is nice today. They said it's going to be 80 degrees today. Yeah, it's been chilly all week, but it's nice today. Yeah, it's nice and cool. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's never too humid. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, give them curry chicken and dal curry. If they see me come and they have to put something for them, they're already scared. Yeah. I put a dish for them. Yeah. 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 Also have some tomatoes. I'll just add a few chopped tomatoes. We have a lot in the garden, so why not? All good flavor. To beautiful crisp scallions. Lots of fresh, delicious flavor. We already have the, see, it was already seasoned, but it was in the freezer, so the flavors are not going to be that fresh, so we need to break it up a bit, add layers of flavor. It's been only cooking for about five minutes. I used to only cut these in two pieces, but my husband, I gave him the task of cutting legs one day, and he cut it into three, and I... Since then, I've been addicted. You know, you always like something different to what you're doing. You know, it keeps things exciting. At a certain point in your life, it, exciting is when you cut the chicken instead of two into three pieces. And so it goes. Now I'll add the potatoes, about a pound of potatoes. I peeled, rinsed, and cut up the tomatoes, hot peppers, and the scallion. I'm going to raise the heat to medium, cover and cook. First I'll add the thyme, cover and cook for about 20 minutes. Then we'll check it again.
natural liquid has evaporated. And now I'll add some water, taste and add for salt and black pepper. And I'll also remove the thyme sprigs. One teaspoon of salt, I'll taste it and see if it needs more. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. Be very careful if you don't want to mash up the potatoes, but I really don't care. Because I just like the sauce to dip the dalpri in. We're adding the potatoes to thicken up the sauce and give us a lot of gravy to eat with that roti, that delicious roti. Taste it one more time. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And I'll let it cook for five minutes and then I'll take off the stove. You don't want this hardcore in the middle. High heat to dry the pot and get it ready for the oil. I'm adding a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to add a couple of bits of onion. This is like a quarter large onion. Add hot pepper to taste. This is habanero. You can use scotch bonnet or the cherry peppers I showed you earlier. Add hot pepper. I'll add two tablespoons of curry powder. Give it a stir. I'll cook it for two minutes, then I'll add some water. And let me get some green seasoning from the fridge. One table one tablespoon of green seasoning. Two heaping tablespoons of green seasoning. Give it a stir. We'll add some more water in a second. I'll add half cup of water. Cook it for two to three minutes more. I'm adding a tablespoon more of curry powder because it seems like a lot of cabbage. The curry has separated from the oil, so now I'll add the cabbage. Along with the chopped onions, and I have a couple of cloves of garlic in there. I'm adding some salt to help it to wilt more quickly. I don't want the curry to burn, so I'm going to try to bring the curry up. And my baby boy is crying because he wants to go out. Making a mess anyway. I'm going to start wilting and releasing its juices. So I can't add any water here to prevent that curry from burning.
real what's the matter what's the matter with my baby All right, you see why I said we need to add three tablespoons of curry? The last minute addition of the tomatoes. We have lots of cherry tomatoes in the bottom, so got to use it up. I could have cooked this earlier with the curry, but we will make it work. I'll add a little sweetness, hotness, and I'm making a lot of mess here. I think I'll also get some thyme leaves to add to this. Give it a taste. I got some thyme from the garden, so I'm going to add like a tablespoon of thyme leaves. This Chinese cabbage is not releasing as much liquid like the regular, so um, we'll make it work. I hope you can see there. It only takes like 10 or 15 minutes. Cook it for another five minutes and then I'll take off the stove. Mm, yeah. I'll add about three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now I'll add in the ground dal, ground split peas. Reduce the heat to low while I get the salt ready. I'll add one teaspoon of salt and I use Himalayan salt. And that's just for reference to let you know. If you're using table salt, you might need less. Roasted cumin, jeera, about one tablespoon. If you want more, you can add more. Mix. I'll cook this for about five minutes until all the excess liquid evaporates and becomes powdery. You taste it at this point, see if you need more salt or if you want a touch more cumin. I don't like adding too much because it can overpower. It's a very strong flavor. You want to taste it, but you don't want it to overpower your dish. I just wanted to come back and let you know that it really tastes it's exceptionally delicious. I'm tasting the bandanya, the culantro. If you don't have bandanya, you can use cilantro. I'm tasting the garlic, I'm tasting the hot pepper, the cumin, and uh, of course the split peas. It's absolutely delicious and it's going to be a great filling for our dal today. 
this is something you could do way in advance a couple of weeks or a month in advance put it in the freezer and when you take it out if it's moist you just continue to cook it in the pot like this until it becomes a texture similar to this or even uh, more powdery and look out for those lumps of cumin in there Or you could do it the day before, leave it in the refrigerator. You could knead the flour the day before, fill the day off. Shoy, let me wake you up. The dough has been resting for quite some time. I'll divide it into four. And it's very soft. This is just some regular all-purpose flour. I'm going to pull it towards the top. It's very soft, so I want to firm it up a bit. So I'll put it towards the top like this. Oh, I forgot to have to divide each into two. With this one. A little bit of flour because it's sticky. Bring it towards the top. Divide it in two. Repeat the process. Bring it to meet at the top, seal it, twist the seal. Very sticky, it was very soft, which is good. But we don't want it too soft, or else it will be unmanageable when we're filling the dough. It doesn't have to take too long. Takes only a couple of minutes. I hope you're seeing all of that. I'll wrap it. It's still soft. You can let this sit for a couple of minutes, but because, but because it's very soft. I think I can wrap it right away. If not, if it was pulling back, then you allow it to rest for another 15 minutes. I'm gonna open this wide. Okay, grasp it in your hands, cup it. Your hands uh, Deep, that's a good thing. Where is my measuring cup? I'm taking a quarter cup measuring cup. Put it in the center. Okay. Put it in the center. Press it down, and then we're going to pull up to the top. I hope you can see this. At this point, I always get very brave. Well, I try to be brave, and I add a little more. Pinch to seal. And this is the cheating way because we don't make dalfrey every day. All right, make sure it's sealed properly. All while cooking, it's going to break. 
first and it won't swell. So that's one. Put flower, press to flatten, and we're also widening it at the same time. All right, put it in the palm of your hand, scoop up about a quarter cup, press it down so it won't fall all over the place. And you're pulling it up towards the top, pinching it, pinch and rotate to seal. Once it's sealed, you can put a little bit of flour, slap it up, and that's it. Number two. And you want to clean your surface, put some flour, press. Water cup in the middle, press, press it up, pinch, and twist. Make sure there are no holes in there. Add some flour and you're pushing towards the side and that's it, number three. Okay, I'll finish off the rest and I'll see you back in a couple of minutes. have a lot of the ground dal left, put it in a Ziploc bag, or you could divide it into two, put it in a resealable bag and put it in the freezer until you're ready to use. So the next two or one time you cook dal pre, there'll be much less work. All you need to do is knead the flour, fill the dough and cook it. And that's the filled dal pre, now we'll get ready to cook it. You flour it well, else it will stick or break. Don't put too much pressure on it. See, you have to keep an eye on the areas that's thinning. If you're making Dalpuri for the first time, don't roll it out too thin. it will break. And that's it. The tawa is heating. I've oiled it. And now I'll place this on the tawa. See, you can even see the filling on the inside. I'm going to put it on the towel. I'm going to do this to dust out the excess flour. 
place it on the towel, stretch it, medium heat, cook it for a couple of seconds, take vegetable oil and brush it, lower in the heat, it's now at low, put some oil, your first one may never come out perfect, but it's okay. Brush on your oil gently. You don't want it to break. That oil is going to help it to cook. Absolute perfection. Have a tray ready to put it on. Be gentle with the steam or be careful with the steam. And that's it. That's your first one. Okay, it's probably browning at the bottom there. It's always good to have color. See, there's a nice color on it. That's flavor. And this is done. Be careful. Removing it. See, that steam can hurt you. I'm going to reduce my heat to low and place it on a cloth. Wipe your towel in between. And re-oil it. Ouch. Let's remember that spot. Okay. Make sure your heat is on low because it will take a little while to belay the roti. Be careful when you're picking it up. You could pierce the dough with your fingers. So be a little cautious. And do it carefully. Flour, whenever it's getting thin, you add flour to add that barrier of protection. Make sure you get the edges. Caress, a little more flour. Not too thin, not too thick. Make it just right. Okay, we're almost done. Just one more. Just one more. And that's it, I'll put it on the towel and I'll cook the rest and you'll see the finished product. Stretch it to make a circle. Start brushing it gently with the oil. You don't want to break the dough, so you do it gently. All over. You don't want to miss a spot. Make sure you get the edges, raising the heat just a little. I know you don't like the videos too long, so I'll cook the rest after this one, and then you'll see the final product. Careful when you're turning. You don't want to break it. And there you have it. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Pretty delicious. Absolutely splendid. This is a work of art. Your work of art. You see? The steam is coming out this way. But if you want a little more drama, just press it. 
you have your drama right there. I'm going to turn it because this side is not as brown. Be careful. Watch for the steam. It has a lovely color. There's nothing wrong with brown bits. Color equals flavor. Now I'm going to remove it. Put the dabla. This is a dabla, and if you need a dabla, look for it in my shop or on my website, cookingwithria.com. You lift it up from the middle. You fold it, put it in the middle again, and that's it. That's your Delpri. I have um, wrapped two of the doughs, the Dalpuri dough in parchment paper, and I'm putting this in the refrigerator. I just want to see how it's going to be tomorrow, if it's still going to be good or manageable, uh, just to let you guys know as well.